have 15 seconds to find the celebrity. You have 15 seconds to find the celebrity. Devil James Stereo brings you a Boombox Films Kenny Willis Productions. The original film creator and producer of both Hollywood films titled Blade and Space Jam. You have 15 seconds to find the celebrity. Tell us about yourself. Also casted both Wesley Snipes and Michael Jordan as leading actors in both films. Who are you? <laughs> original creator and cartoonist who created both McDonald's Land and McDonald's Mac Tonight mascot. Devil James in association with Kenny Willis Productions gives you persistent praying of the dreadful deals. I'm a pretty good guy. We're hidden in the audience as a celebrity that you know. The From the haunted hills of Hollywood comes a Kenny Willis production in association with Devil James Stereo Static. The persistent praying of the dreadful deals. The Devil Made Me Do It Boombox Films in League with the infamous Devil James Stereo Static. Hello, my name is Devil James, and uh... The only catch is we hired an award-winning makeup artist and disguised them. You have 15 seconds to find the celebrity, but... Also, not your hobbies, Dave. Just simple. Tell us who you are. I just... Maybe you could give me an example of what a good answer would be. Um, what did you say? Tom! Oh. You scared me. I scared you. What are you doing? I'm supposed to dig. What do you mean? I'm supposed to dig. Who says? What's Jake doing? Jake is helping. Why are you doing this? Water softens up the dirt. No, I mean... Could you just stop for a second? Tom, can you turn around and look at me while what? I'm talking to you? Exactly. Don't you understand? I'm supposed to dig. Why are you digging? I'm searching. What are you searching for? The question is not what. I think we both know very well what. Minute. Question again. But you can plainly see I am very busy trying to answer. Question is where. Don't worry, it's okay. It's not over there. We're calling the police. It's all what exactly, huh? Practice it. Run up by me once. I want to see how it sounds out loud. Anything else? Tom, why don't you come inside with me? I want to talk to you. You're not yourself right now. This is just fucking typical. You know, what do you want me to do, Nike, huh? Do you want me to go inside and just, uh... Sit down on the couch in front of the TV and drink eight or nine beers until I fall asleep and maybe just repeat the whole thing again tomorrow and the day after 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 until 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 I I grab my chest and die. Eight years I've known you. Not once have you talked to me like this. Not once. And if you do it again, I swear to God. And you know what else? When you talk about how ordinary you are and your stupid life, you know what you're really saying? You're saying our stupid life, which I don't think is particularly stupid. So 
how the fuck am I supposed to feel about that? This here piece of paper to deal still on. Tear that up and give me some peace. Why on earth would I want to do that? Are you sloughed up on your end of things? I didn't end up where I wanted. I didn't end up with nothing. Didn't get nothing. You got what you were supposed to get, blues man. Ain't nothing ever as good as we wanted to be. But that ain't no reason to break a deal. Of course, you had something to offer me. Got a couple hundred dollars. I'm interested in your money, you know that. How about cutting heads? Oh, I get it. You want some kind of contest, huh? You're a real smart boy, ain't you? Well, smart boy. I got a big white fella from Memphis made a deal with me a few years back. Real good guitar player, name is Jack Butler. Cuts heads every Saturday night, yes sir. He discourages a lot of incoming boys. Yeah, but Willie doesn't even play guitar. Oh yeah, I forgot that. Ain't that too bad? Guess there ain't much hope at all. Get it crowd. Unless you might want to sit in for him. Don't do it. Sure, he's my friend. I don't believe in any of this shit anyway. I say don't do it, Lightning. You win? I tear up with his contract. But what happens if my man Jack Butler win? You get me. I already got you. Well, then you got me too. Shut up, you here. I don't want you making no deals. Take it easy, Willie. I'm just calling his bluff for you. I'll get the fuck to this point after this. Where and when for this thing? Oh, I can get us there real quick. My name is Louis Goma, and I ain't no rich man, but I, I got no rich You know, go to hell. You're in hell. This is hell. This is hell. This is hell. Let's suppose that you were able every night to dream any dream you wanted to dream. And that you could, for example, have the power within one night to dream 75 years of time. Or any length of time you wanted to have. And you would naturally, as you began on this adventure of dreams, you would fulfill all your wishes. You would have every kind of pleasure see. and after several nights of 75 years of total pleasure each you would say well wow, that was pretty great but now let's um let's have a surprise let's have a dream which isn't under control well something is going to happen to me that i don't know what it's going to be And uh, you, you would dig that and come out of that and say, wow, that was a, a close shave, wasn't it? Then you would get more and more adventurous, and you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. 
And finally, you would dream where you are now. You would dream the dream of living the life that you are actually living today. That would be within the infinite multiplicity of choices you would have. Of playing that you weren't God. Because the whole nature of the Godhead, according to this idea, is to play that he's not. The first thing he says to himself is, man, get lost. Because he gives himself away. The nature of love is self-abandonment. clinging to oneself, throwing yourself out, as in, for example, in basketball, you're always getting rid of the ball. You say to the other fellow, have a ball, you see? And uh, that, that keeps things moving. That's the nature of life. So in this idea then, everybody is fundamentally the ultimate reality. Not God in a politically kingly sense, but God in the sense of being the self, the deep down basic whatever there is. And you're all that. Only you're pretending you're not. You, want, you know what's so funny? We want people to make guarantees to us, but we're not willing to make guarantees to ourselves. Have an opinion, don't be afraid to share it. You've never looked at yourself in the mirror and said, you let you die. Until you get to that point, you let you die. You've never, you're not brave enough. You want to put it on somebody else. It gave me a sense of the fact that my personality and the way I speak and my confidence is what won me that crown made me feel like confidence is your best accessory. There is nothing else you need. If you, The only thing you need to wear well is your confidence. The reason why I'm not successful is because of my boss. Have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror and said, I'm not getting up on time. I'm not going to work on time. I'm not putting in 120% when I'm at work. I let me down. And when you get to the point where you can say you let you down, A chance at a future, really. The mission is to impact as many lives as possible. But it starts with just one. Just one. I see optimism. I see hope. I see the future. I know that each and every one of you has the opportunity to help someone else. All you need to do is help one person, expecting nothing in return. To me, that is a humanitarian. People make it seem way too hard, man. The truth is, <laughs> is that you don't have to be rich to be a humanitarian. You don't have to be rich to help somebody. You don't gotta be famous. You don't even have to be college educated. I mean, 
person right next to you, the person sitting next to you in class, the kid down the block in your neighborhood. You just do whatever you can to help in any way that you can. And today I want to challenge each of you to make a commitment to help one person. Sunrise or sunset. That's what I did. If I knew then what I know now, darkness is death digging at the devil's time. Man, you don't have a clue to what I'm talking about. Well, you know, good. Out of here. What you're about to hear, it doesn't mean anything. You know, I'm just going on with it. It's crazy talk. Remember me? <laughs> hey, what's up, Sykes? I ain't seen you for a while, baby. Want to renegotiate the contract? Not contract. That deal is your soul for fame and fortune. Do not deliver. I want to see how it sounds out loud. Anything else? Tom, why don't you come inside? I want to talk to you. You're not yourself right now. Oh, this is just fucking dead. Now, what do you want me to do, Danny? Huh? You want me to go inside and just uh, sit down on the couch in front of the TV and drink eight or nine beers until I fall asleep and maybe just repeat the whole thing again tomorrow and the day after 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 until, until, until I, I grab my chest and die. This, this is the most important thing that's ever happened to me. I mean, this is, this is the most important thing that I've ever done in my whole life, in my whole stupid life. And you want me to just stop? No! No, I won't stop! I won't stop! I won't stop! Eight years I've known you. Not once have you talked to me like this. Not once. And if you do it again, I swear to God. And you know what else? When you talk about how ordinary you are and your stupid life, you know what you're really saying? You're saying our stupid life, which I don't think is particularly stupid. So how the fuck am I supposed to feel about that? My name is Louis Gova, and I know it. But I, I got to go to truth. You don't have to go to hell. You're in hell. This is 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 h
Let's start playing a piece. Of course, there's a film I've got to see. If you play the great, it's gonna go around. Yeah, right, Willie. Who is this guy? You were about 17 last time we saw each other. One night on this old crossroads, wasn't it? What can I do for you, Willie Brown? I come to see you, tell you the deal's off. Oh, no. According to this here piece of paper, the deal's still off. Tear that up and give me some peace. Why on earth would I want to do that? Are you sloughed up on your end of things? I didn't end up where I wanted. I didn't end up with nothing. Didn't get nothing. You got what you were supposed to get, Blues Man. Ain't nothing ever as good as we want it to be. But that ain't no reason to break a deal. Of course, you had something to offer me. Got a couple of hundred dollars. Ain't interested in your money, you know that. How about cutting heads? Oh, I get it. You want some kind of contest, huh? You real smart boy, ain't you? Real smart boy. I got a big white fella from Memphis to deal with me. To get back, he'll be a guitar player. Name is Jack Butler. Cut his every Saturday night. Yes, he discourages a lot of them coming boys. He doesn't even play guitar. Oh, yeah. Ain't that too bad. Yes, there ain't much hope at all. He's going to cry. Unless you might want to sit in for him. Don't do it. Sure, he's my friend. I don't believe in any of this shit anyway. I say don't do it, Lightning. You win? I tear up Willie's contract. But what happens if my man Jack Butler win? You get me. I already got you. Well, then you got me too. Shut up, you here. I don't want you making no Take deals. Take it easy, Willie. I'm just calling his bluff here. I'll get to Fulton's point after this. Let's suppose that you were able every night to dream any dream you wanted to dream. And that you could, for example, have the power within one night to dream 75 years of time. Or any length of time you wanted to have. And you would naturally, as you began on this adventure of dreams, you would fulfill all your wishes. You would have every kind of pleasure you can see. And after several nights of 75 years of total pleasure each, you would say, well, that was pretty great. But now let's, um, let's have a surprise. Let's have a dream which isn't under control. Well, something is going to happen to me that I don't know what it's going to be. Dig that and come out of that and say, wow, that was a, a close shave, wasn't it? And then you would get more and more adventurous and you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. And finally, you would dream where you are now. You would dream the dream of living the life that you are actually living today. 
that would be within the infinite multiplicity of choices you would have. Playing that you weren't God. Because the whole nature of the Godhead, according to this idea, is to play that he's not. The first thing he says to himself is, man, get lost. Because he gives himself away. The nature of love is self-abandonment, not clinging to oneself. Throwing yourself out, as in, for example, in basketball, you're always getting rid of the ball. You say to the other fellow, have a ball. See? And uh, that, that keeps things moving. That's the nature of life. So in this idea then, everybody is fundamentally the ultimate reality. Not God in a politically kingly sense, but God in the sense of being the self, the deep down basic whatever there is. And you're all that, only you're pretending you're not. Whose work revealed that there is some sort of composite human life people that are a part of our reality, but that don't actually have souls. They don't actually composite a unit within themselves of consciousness. And in that sense, they're strictly energy. They're just a matrix simulation version of a person that appears in every way like they are a real living human being with a soul, but that they are just energy. They're a simulated version of a human in order to animate and enhance and even amplify our experience here in the third dimension. And so what this came from was a way to explain why some beings have more of what we would call a higher consciousness or more of a soulful and developed soul within our being, why we can see through illusions that other people don't seem to be able to see through, or that we can think for ourselves, or that we have certain capacities of critical thinking that other people don't seem to display that they have. that they don't even seem to have the capacity for how unconscious individuals can act in every way energetically vampirical without even meaning to simply because unconsciousness is bound to drain it's just draining that's the nature of being unconscious i want to inspire you and make you realize that thought can you not see that if you set yourself a goal for something you want to manifest and achieve believe just believe and it will happen because I'm here to inspire you so fucking much that after you watch this video, my words will linger with you. Make you realize you can have anything you fucking want in this world and you can do anything you fucking want in this world. Because I'm no longer attached, I don't care anymore. I'm already telling myself the story, so it's already happening in my eyes. So reality catches up in no time, so I'm just gonna keep pretending until that happens. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be a real mind fuck. shit so stop assuming that everybody hates you start telling yourself stories that you are awesome and people do love you topic and i have always wondered when people were talking about this which is quantum jumping i wondered how they did it and recently i've been doing it myself and i'm going to be sharing all the little hacks with you of how i do it my name is louis Cora, and i know the man but i i got no the truth you know who the hell you're in hell! This is 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 hell
been a long time. You were about 17 last time we saw each other. One night on this old crossroads, wasn't it? What can I do for you, Willie Brown? I come to see you, tell you the deal's off. Oh, no. According to this here piece of paper, the deal's still on. You can tear that up and give me some peace. Why on earth would I want to do that? Are you sloughed up on your end of things? I didn't end up where I wanted. I didn't end up with nothing. Didn't get nothing. You got what you were supposed to get, blues man. Ain't nothing ever as good as we want it to be. But that ain't no reason to break a deal. I got to have some help. I want to renegotiate your contract. My contract. You remember me? Remember me? <laughs> hey, what's up, Sykes? I ain't seen you for a while, baby. How'd <laughs> you? Your soul, fame and fortune. Did not deliver. Yes. We want people to make guarantees to us, but we're not willing to make guarantees to ourselves. Now, bro, I'm gonna say it again. Like you, somebody gave you a guarantee, 30 dollars, 30 day guarantee. In 30 days, if, they, if you don't make what they told you was gonna make, in 30 days you got an attitude. You want your money back, but you never demanded your money back from yourself. You never looked at yourself in the mirror and said, you let you die. Until you get to that point, you let you die. You never, you're not brave enough. You want to put it on somebody else. The reason why I'm not successful is because of my boss. Have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror and said, I'm not getting up on time. I'm not going to work on time. I'm not putting in 120% when I'm at work. I let me down. And when you get to the point where you can say you let you down, I don't, can't listen to me, no disrespect. Time. Ugh. You scared me. I scared you. What are you doing? They're supposed to take. What do you mean? They're supposed to take. Who says? Tom, can you turn around and look at me while what? I'm talking to you? Exactly. Don't you understand? I'm supposed to dig. Why are you digging? I'm searching. What are you searching for? The question is not what. I think we both know very well what. Oh, I'm busy. The question is. The is very busy. Trying to finish. The calm of It's all of what? Exactly. Huh? Practice it. Run a by me once. I want to see how it sounds out loud. Anything else? Tom, why don't you come inside with me? I want to talk to you. You're not yourself right now. Oh, this is just fucking difficult. What do you want me to do right here? You want me to go inside and just uh, sit down on the couch in front of the TV and drink eight or nine beers until I fall asleep and maybe just repeat the whole thing again tomorrow and the day after 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 until, until, until I, I grab my chest and die.
this is this is the most important thing that I've ever done in my whole life, in my whole stupid life. And you want me to just stop? No! No, I won't stop! I won't stop! I won't stop! Years I've known you. Not once can you talk to me like this. Not once. And if you do it again, I swear to God. And you know what else? When you talk about how ordinary you are and your stupid life, you know what you're really saying? You're saying our stupid life. I don't think is particularly stupid. So how the fuck am I supposed to feel about that? Otherwise known as non-player characters. Background characters. So today I'm going to be explaining exactly what NPCs are and their true origins. concept of NPCs, or non-player characters, did not originate within the spirit of this age. However, the most recent story, or element, of this background character is some sort of composite, human-like people that are a part of our reality, but that don't actually have souls. They don't actually composite a unit within themselves of consciousness. And in that sense, they're strictly energy. They're just a matrix simulation version of a person that appears in every way like they are a real living human being with a soul, but that they are just energy. They're a simulated version of a human in order to animate and enhance and even amplify our experience here in the third dimension and so what this came from was a way to explain why some beings have more of what we would call a higher consciousness or more of a soulful and developed soul within our being why we can see through illusions that other people don't seem to be able to see through or that we can think for ourselves or that we have certain capacities of critical thinking that other people don't seem to display that they have or that they don't even seem to have the capacity for. Unconscious individuals can act in every way energetically vampirical without even meaning to, simply because unconsciousness is bound to drain. It's just drain. That's the nature of being unconscious. So when it comes to these NPCs, what is looked at is that they're more of like the background characters as though we're in a movie and we're the main character and that they provide all of the different extras that we need inside our scenes of our life. Why? To enhance our own learning ability so that us, the ones who have a soul and the ones who have a consciousness embodied within our physical vessel, can learn and can better have the friction from these background characters supplied to us. I want to inspire you and make you realize that fuck, can you not see that if you set yourself a goal for something you want to manifest and achieve, believe, just believe, and it will happen. Prepare for your life to be changed with this video because I am here to inspire you so fucking much that after you watch this video, my words will linger with you, make you realize you can have anything you fucking want in this world and you can do anything you fucking want in this world. I'm no longer attached, I don't care anymore. I'm already telling myself the story, so it's already happening in my eyes. So reality catches up in no time, so I'm just gonna keep pretending until that happens. Do you know what I'm saying? Don't assume anything. Don't assume that everyone hates you. That's another thing that I used to do, like out of lack of confidence. People are wrapped up in their own shit, so stop assuming that everybody hates you. Start telling yourself stories that you are awesome and people do love you. What? You looking for me, Willie Brown? Been a long time. Of this hit piece of paper to deal 
Neville James took a wild ride into the realms of quantum entanglement and the matrix theory, blurring the lines between reality and imagination. Like a mad scientist, he wove a tapestry of ideas, connecting the dots between the interconnectedness of quantum particles and the simulated reality of the matrix. In his daring exploration, Devil James delved deep into the mysterious world of quantum entanglement, where particles become intertwined regardless of distance, defying conventional notions of space and time. Drawing parallels to the Matrix theory, he speculated about the possibility of our reality being a complex simulation, governed by unseen forces and hidden dimensions. With a dash of madness and a sprinkle of genius, Devil James challenged the boundaries of perception, inviting others to question the nature of reality and embrace the infinite possibilities that lie beyond. While his journey may have seemed batshit crazy to some, it ignited a spark of curiosity and wonder, inspiring others to embark on their own adventures of exploration and discovery. I have no fucking idea what on God's green earth you are talking about this time you crazy bitch. But you should put a lid on it, or at least pipe the fuck down. I am trying to listen to my Devil James Boombox film, but you keep running on and on about all of Sir Lord Devil James calculations he has written on his chalkboard. fucking clue who the fuck you think you are talking to you crazy asshole, but you do not get to tell me what I can say or do. I don't take orders from the likes of silly pricks such as yourself. My sweet sweet baby devil, James would never leave his equations or calculations out for anyone to find them, so you can go blow all that goofy shit out of your ass. My deepest apologies my lady, I had no idea you knew about Sir Lord Devil James's deviated spin theory, rooted in the concept of the golden ratio, proposes a unique perspective on the nature of spin and motion. According to this theory, objects and phenomena in the universe exhibit a spin that deviates from conventional patterns, aligning instead with the mathematical principles of the golden ratio. The golden ratio, often denoted by the Greek letter phi, phi, is a mathematical constant approximately equal to 1.618033. 39887. It appears frequently in nature, art, and architecture, renowned for its aesthetic appeal and harmonious proportions. In Devil James's theory, the deviated spin suggests that objects possess a rotational motion that follows the spiral pattern inherent in the golden ratio. This spiral motion, characterized by expanding or contracting curves, reflects a fundamental harmony and balance in the universe. By applying the golden ratio to the study of spin, Devil James proposes a deeper understanding of the underlying order and structure of the cosmos. His theory challenges traditional notions of rotational dynamics, offering a fresh perspective that embraces the inherent beauty and symmetry found in the mathematical relationships of the natural world. Sir Lord 
Lord Devil James took a wild ride into the realms of quantum entanglement and the Matrix theory, blurring the lines between reality and imagination. Like a mad scientist, he wove a tapestry of ideas, connecting the dots between the interconnectedness of quantum particles and the simulated reality of the Matrix. In his daring exploration, Devil James delved deep into the mysterious world of quantum entanglement, where particles become intertwined regardless of distance, defying conventional notions of space and time. Drawing parallels to the Matrix theory, he speculated about the possibility of our reality being a complex simulation, governed by unseen forces and hidden dimensions. With a dash of madness and a sprinkle of genius, Devil James challenged the boundaries of perception, inviting others to question the nature of reality and embrace the infinite possibilities that lie beyond. While his journey may have seemed batshit crazy to some, it ignited a spark of curiosity and wonder, inspiring others to embark on their own adventures of exploration and discovery. I have no fucking idea what on God's green earth you are talking about this time you crazy bitch. But you should put a lid on it, or at least pipe the fuck down. I am trying to listen to my Devil James Boombox film, but you keep running on and on about all of Sir Lord Devil James' calculations he has written on his chalkboard. I have no fucking clue who the fuck you think you are talking to you crazy asshole, but you do not get to tell me what I can say or do. I don't take orders from the likes of silly pricks such as yourself. My sweet sweet baby devil, James, would never leave his equations or calculations out for anyone to find them, so you can go blow all that goofy shit out of your ass. My deepest apologies my lady, I had no idea you knew about Sir Lord Devil James's deviated spin theory, rooted in the concept of the golden ratio, proposes a unique perspective on the nature of spin and motion. According to this theory, objects and phenomena in the universe exhibit a spin that deviates from conventional patterns, aligning instead with the mathematical principles of the golden ratio. The golden ratio, often denoted by the Greek letter phi, phi, is a mathematical constant approximately equal to 1.618033988. It appears frequently in nature, art, and architecture, renowned for its aesthetic appeal and harmonious proportions. In Devil James's theory, the deviated spin suggests that objects possess a rotational motion that follows the spiral pattern inherent in the golden ratio. This spiral motion, characterized by expanding or contracting curves, reflects a fundamental harmony and balance in the universe. By applying the golden ratio to the study of spin, Devil James proposes a deeper understanding of the underlying order and structure of the cosmos. His theory challenges traditional notions of rotational dynamics, offering a fresh perspective that embraces the inherent beauty and symmetry found in the mathematical relationships of the natural world.